Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week of study. And we're going to be continuing placing um, uh, well, Ehud and Shamgar. We're going to deal with those as having their own lines. But before uh, we begin, can we have a word of prayer? <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the study this morning. We invite your Holy Spirit to be here in our midst, to teach us, to instruct us. We need your help in all things. Uh, we pray for each person searching for truth. We pray that you can uh, enlighten our minds, that you can help us with the conviction that we have felt because of these truths, that our focus is to be upon you, and not upon ourselves and others as far as um, righteousness is concerned. We know righteousness comes from you, and um, you are the standard. So we pray, Lord, that as we study together, your spirit can bring this conviction and strengthen us in our spiritual walk. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, good morning. And uh, so we had finished off almost dealing with Ehud in drawing the lines. And uh, we're going to do the line of Shamgar as well and look at his individual line. We don't have a lot to go by with Shamgar. Um, but I'm just going to read a bit here, um, Judges 3. Um, so in 3 verse 27, so 3 verse 27, of course, is a symbol of March 27th. And it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab, and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest fourscore years. Now, uh, we're going to go to our lines here. So if we remember here, we had had this line, um, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, and here we have the line of Ehud himself. So we can see that that's a zoom into the second angel's message. And here we're bringing this really close to home, dealing with the history of this movement from the time that the 2520 arrives, because Ehud represents the 2520. And then we look at um, um, the symbols down here. So this is 2010. This is going to be when the 2520 is formalized. Um, and we would look at that as dealing with um, the completion of Parminder's presentations, his 20 presentations on the 2520. We also would look at that as... Um, the April 2010 paper by Johannes Koletsky. And um, we would also see that as uh, the camp meeting in Oklahoma. So that's the November 7th, 2010 camp meeting. All of those address a, a formalization of the 2520. And we look at this in the story of Ehud as this present that's delivered. So that's how we, we understood this. So the 2520 arriving is the message of Ehud with the two-edged sword. Uh, he's left-handed son, that is the son of, uh, of Benjamin is the son of the right hand. So he's left-handed, but he's the son of the right hand. 
So I should make that clear there. All right, so he's of the tribe of Benjamin, which means son of the right hand, but he's left-handed. And he has this sword, and then he's gonna have this present. We know that there's also uh, this quarries of Gilgal where he turns, right? And then um, we're marking that as being Newport, April 27th, 2012. And then the arrival of the second angel is the sword put into um, uh, what's his name? Uh, can't think of the king's name. Uh, Eglon, that's it. So Eglon has this um, sword uh, put into him and uh, we're gonna have these closed doors. So we have the center of a chiasm. We also have the pillars, right? So when he, he goes out, he goes through these pillars. And we're placing this as Sylvan Lake 2013. So that's where uh, Jeff and I both present the four seven times. So this is a new aspect of the 2520 that's, that's being presented in connection with um, a very specific chronology. And that's going to be formalized in Arkansas on June 22nd, 2014. Um, and that part of it has to do with understanding uh, from the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month, which we call the tarrying time, right? That is in Millerite history, the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month is the tearing time. And there's a tearing that goes on there. Um, and then um, we also have in connection with this, he passes Gilgal again. This is Ehud when he leaves. So any, any questions about what we're doing here? Because I know we're jumping back into this since Wednesday. Uh, so pillars are referring to the fireballs and buildings with pillars in Nashville. Um, I mean, maybe there's an echo of that, but I would think that the pillars there primarily, uh, because here we're dealing with the 2520, not with July 18, um, though it's gonna lead to that. But I think this would have to do with truths that are being set up. Um, what else could the pillars refer to? So we have this, um, <clears throat> um, he shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them, and he went forth through the porch. Um, so that's a colonnade or internal portico um, from its rows of pillars. So that's the porch, it has these row, row of pillars. <clears throat> A colonnade, right? And he's going to shut the doors. And these are two levered doors. Pillars of foundations, ain't they? They're not foundations, but they, yeah, pillars of foundations, right? Well, pillars are truths, they're set up on a yeah. foundation. Technically speaking, the foundation is a prophetic message wow. and the pillars, the pillars refer to uh, the doctrines. But yeah, so Angela, I think, is, is this right idea that a colonnade, colonnade like a line with way marks. And that's the way that I, I would look at it more in this context. Because this is these lines, this understanding of the lines, these way marks. And so the 2520 um, helps us to understand these waymarks, especially when we look at what's going to follow, because this in 2013, the Sylvan Lake Camp Meeting, is where the four seven times are understood, both by Jeff and myself, we present this. And then 
what's going to follow is a thorough understanding of chronology. So up until that time, I, I had been studying chronology in connection with the 2520, but now things start to come together in a more particular way. And so in 2014, um, we're going to have, and, and part of it comes from this understanding of the first day of the first month to the first day of the fifth month. So that tearing time period, which is proposed at the last day of the Sylvan Lake camp meeting that Jeff asked the question, can we figure out when uh, the midnight cry occurred in Millerite history, the exact date? Uh, when would the first day of the fifth month be? Was that when the midnight cry was given? And so I figured out on, on that date, the calculation, uh, dealing with that, it being the first day of the fifth month, and um, that it's going to be on the Wednesday that snow is first going to present. So that's actually going to be the last day of the fourth month. But it's going to be on the first day of the fifth month that he's going to complete uh, that presentation. And so he's going to do three presentations on the 15th. But we never really got it sorted out how the midnight cry worked until last year. So my paper on the midnight cry being the 15th day of August um, and correctly getting Boston, what happens at Boston and what happens at Exeter got that sorted out. But, but we did have a, a partial understanding of that. And that's going to be presented in Arkansas by Noel on June 22nd, 2014. So that's a formal Organization. And um, in Arkansas on October 20th to 21st, I'm then going to present um, the chronology. Now, to call it an empowerment of the message, I mean, one thing that we would say about it is uh, it didn't seem like much of an empowerment. I mean, it seems almost more like an introduction. So if I'm going to put the empowerment of that message at October 20th to 21st, 2014, why would I do that? And that's the blowing of the trumpet that um, to call the call to Ephraim. So what has Ephraim represented in the story of the judges? Because we've dealt with Ephraim, there's three times really we deal with Ephraim um, in these specific ways. This is the first time. And Ephraim is going to come to this uh, battle at the call of Ehud, who's a Benjamite. So they're both descendants of Rachel. That's basically Joseph and Benjamin. Um, but later we're going to have Ephraim uh, in two different situations. So how did we understand Ephraim in the story of Gideon and then later in uh, the story of, um, what's his name? Here, I'm going to have to look this up. So how do we understand Ephraim? Anybody? Did Ephraim have... Those parts of the movement. Yeah, the parts of the movement that seem to be not called when they they thought that they should be keeping up with us, I guess, and they thought that we were excluding them, but it's actually been the other way around more of the time. Okay. Right. In my opinion. Yes. So that's what we have. So we have, um, it's going to be under Deborah and Barak that we're going to have. Um, let me see here. No, it's going to be under Gideon, pardon me, that he sends messengers throughout Mount, Mount Ephraim, say, come down against the Midianites. And um, they're going to complain about that they weren't treated very well, but of course, uh, Gideon's response is going to appease them. 
And then we're going to see that um, in the story of uh, uh, in Judges, I think it's Judges 12. Yeah, so that's going to deal with the story of Jephthah. So anyway, there, Ephraim is going to be this part of this movement. So can we see that it's the same group of people being called or the same type of person being called in each of these, um, each of these events? So here in the story of Ehud, this is a message regarding chronology that's being presented to Ephraim. And progressively, there's going to be a, because um, here in this story, they're going to come at the call of the trumpet. Right? So chronology is going to become an important part of the movement after uh, 2014. But as that chronology develops, it's going to be more and more be rejected. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. Okay. Now, so the, the last way mark we have is the third angel arrives. Now, this I, I put as... Arkansas in October of 2015. So that's a camp meeting that I'm not at. And I'm not sure if that's the best place to place it. Um, we could, so there is another place that we could place it. And I've thought about it uh, because there is a battle that's going to be fought, right? So when we read this last part of Judges chapter three, um, so they call, he calls the, um, uh, Ephraim, um, so he blows the trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them, and he says unto them, follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass over. So is this a type of closed door? Suffered not a man to pass. Yes. Yeah. So it's a type of closed door, right? Which would be the third angel arriving. And, and then they're going to slew the men of Moab uh, at that time, about 10,000 men. So with 10,000, I mean, we've used men to represent days. Um, so if we were going to take this literally as years, that would be 27 years, uh, point three, right? So we have a symbol of March 27th. Um, but of course, you know, there's more days involved because 27.378. Um, so if we're going to deal with that, um, how would we, how would we address this symbol? And, and another way of looking at it is 27 years and 138 and a quarter days. 27 years. Any, any thoughts on that 10,000? Because we've dealt with it in other places. So we could count it uh, from different spots. And I think the one that we had, if I remember correctly, I just have to check it. Yeah, so if we count, 
from 10, if we count 10,000 days from November 9th, 1989, we come to March 27th, 2017. So we have March 27th marked in two different ways. But this is 2017. Now, 2017 uh, goes beyond uh, the line of Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. But can we see that we could take we could take this line and and extend it? That is, if we look at the line above. So hopefully, people are following what I'm saying. So if we look at the line above, we have Othniel. Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. These are the arrival of the first message. But it's going to bring us to a history uh, that is, it, it could bring us all the way up to, Shamgar could, all the way up to 2018. So, so there are other ways that I could do this line. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to suggest another way of looking at this. Um, I'm going to take this formalization of the message as June 22nd to October um, 20. Well, we go just 21. It's just easier. Okay. And then we could do this. Um, so we're just going to put in a date here, March 27th, 2017. And then we would put here, um, so this is one, one way of doing it. Um, so we might change this. But we just put October 13th, uh, 2018. So we're going to bring us up to that date in which the 391 is counted. And, and to me, this would more signify a closed door because of what happens there, that there is... Um, I mean, this is, we, we mark this as the midnight cry on some line, but it is also a closed door. Now, we, you know, we could put November 9th, 2019 there as well, but just in this line of Ehud, could we do this? Is this sensible? Because we're going to deal with Shamgar as well. And Shamgar is going to cover some of this. So that's one way of doing it, but I don't know what the best way is. Now, March 27th, 2017 is a symbolic date. But it, it, it addresses 2017. Yeah, and we also see in two places uh, that number pop up. Yeah, in the 10,000. So the 10,000, which is 27 years and 0.3, is going to bring us to March 27th, 2017. So going from 1989. So that's kind of interesting, right? Now, whether that's where we would place the waymark or whether we would place this at the end. Now, what happens in 2017? So 2017, it has a lot of things connected with it. Uh, the first thing would be um, we, we have the prediction before midnight. So the prediction before midnight is... Um,
becoming understood at this time. So Angela says 0.3 meaning four months. Yes, but it's going to be 0.3 and a bit more. So, so it's, yeah, it's just a bit over four months. So if you go from November 9th, December, January, February, March, it's four months and it's a number of days. That's why we end up as March 27th. But yeah, 27 years and 0.3. So four months and some days. Okay. Um, I mean, technically 130, what was it? 138.25 days. <clears throat> so in, in 2017, um, we're going to have in January 14th, Jeff is going to present Raf Raffia and Paneum as being uh, this midnight in the midnight cry. And he's going to say that the pandemic's going to be between those two dates. So that's going to be between November 9th and July 18th that we have the pandemic. Um, in February, um, Heidi and I are going to travel to Eatonville and um, to watch Jeff present. And I also get involved in a, a debate in uh, Portland. Um, and then uh, and then we're going, then in March 27th, this is going to be connected with um, our spring uh, convocation in Alberta. I can't remember the dates of that specifically, but uh, so March 27, 2017, going to be connected around there. So it's going to be in the spring. And then we had, um, Trump is going to speak at um, NATO. What, what's the dates for Trump uh, at NATO? Do you remember the dates? Anybody? Nobody remembers. Hmm. What was that again, please? Trump. Trump when he spoke at NATO, the the new building. It's in so didn't we just go over that with uh, Stephen just yeah. a few days ago? Yeah, I just don't remember the date. Yeah, me neither. I'm looking forward to I think it's in May 27th or something like that. Uh, hold on. May 25th, 17th. Okay. Could that be it? Okay. Um, yeah. You know the way I scribble, so. <laughs> and maybe it's May 25th. Okay. So that's going to be a bit later. So, so we got, um, we have our spring convocation. I have a school of profit going on. Um, Trump is going to do the NATO speech. So that's going to address uh, 1989 and 9-11, right? Um, so the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, the falling of the Twin Towers. So, so all of these things dealing with the prediction before midnight, um, we have, I'm just trying to remember everything, what happened. Um, I know it's going to be in May. May 25th. Yeah, May 25th. 2017. Yeah, it's okay. And then, and then that, that summer, I end up going again to Eatonville. 
Uh, I do pre a presentation on the structure of prophetic chronology. And then I also, in 2017, end up being invited to, to teach at the School of the Prophets uh, in September. So we also know during that time that there's going to be these, um, uh, there's the, the Italian camp meeting in 2017, and that's going to happen at the time of Pentecost, right? So there's going to be that 9-11 prayer, and that's going to be in on June 2nd, I believe. Yeah, June 2nd. When that's Jeff the one that in, stops at 9-11? Yeah, and he's going to open the Sabbath. So it's 9-11, the sun sets at that place in Italy there. Uh, at 9-11, he actually prays, whether it's that he gets down or he finishes at 9-11, I can't remember. And then the same thing's going to happen in 2018 when he closes the Sabbath, and that's going to be June 9th. Um, so we have that Pentecost prayer, and then we have uh, the prayer that begins the 126 days going to October 13th. So that that's so that's going to be in 2018. But here in 2017, we have this structure begin. Um, uh, dealing with the 391. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that whole structure. Um, and then, of course, in September, I present and Parminder is going to present uh his view on the nature of man, which is going to be uh, a deceptive presentation. He deceives Jeff regarding what he's actually teaching. Uh, this presentation causes further division in the movement. Um, so lots of the people who are uh, leery regarding um, Parminder are going to leave the movement. And, and some of them, rightfully so, and some of them, of course, um, their beliefs are no better than Parminder's. So, so there are some people that are, I mean, rightfully so in the, in the sense that they recognize that Parminder's teaching error. Now, some, of course, are criticizing Jeff for being deceived and allowing Parminder to, to teach this error. And... Uh, I mean, this is going to develop into finally, which is going to be in 2018, early 2018, we're going to have um, Tanya Beeman and Dwayne Dewey leaving the movement. But it's as the result of what happened in 2017. And there was a lot of things about 2017. So it becomes a year in which, um, so maybe we could put 2017, just the end of it. I don't know, but that's, but I have there October 13th, 2018. So 2017 is going to lead to that. So I don't know which is the best way to do this. I wish it was more clear cut. Um, oh, that's the other thing. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll do this. Uh, I forgot. So we can put a date here in 2017. This might be a better date. Uh, so this one. Now, I don't know if that's where I put this. We have the 10,000 days, which is going to bring us to March 27, 2017. Now we have September 23rd, 2017. Now, what is September 23rd, 2017? Could we put this here? What's the event? That's 2017, you were saying? Yeah, September 23rd, 2017. 
Okay, so it's 777 days before November 9th. Uh, Jupiter, Jupiter in Virgo, right? Uh, it's also uh, the first day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar. So it's it's Rosh Hashanah. I'm presenting at Lambert Church uh, that July 18 is a symbol of um, the prediction before midnight. It's also um, the end of the Jewish year 5777. So that is, it's the first day of the Jewish year 5778. So that's the rabbinic um, counting of the years. Though technically, I think it's their, their calendars off that year. They have it as the third of Tishri, but on the biblical calendar, it's the first of Tishri. Um, so it's a failed prediction, an evangelical failed prediction. But I believe that it's a valid observation that the Revelation 12 sign, which also occurs um, similarly uh, at the time of the birth of Christ. So Christ would have been born, um, whatever it is, September 29 or something, 4 BC, which is has the same thing, the moon is under the feet, the sun is in Virgo. So it's gonna be the first day of, it's gonna be the first day of the civil year. So it's Rosh Hashanah, the blowing of the trumpets. So, I mean, maybe in some ways we could even move this over. So I'm gonna do this. So even though we have this March 27th, 2017 date, what if we did this, move this over here? because that is the blowing of the trumpet, Rosh Hashanah. And we're just gonna use that 10,000 days as a symbol. So it's not gonna show up as a way mark here because we don't have an event particularly for March 27th. So do we like this better? Taking the trumpet being the first day of Rosh Hashanah, lining up with the proclamation of July 18th as a symbol of the prediction before midnight. Does that seem better? So we can see here we have the tearing time and this would fit in more with the empowerment of the message. Right, this would fit in with the trumpet of Ehud better, correct? Does that make more sense to people? I'm understanding what you're saying there. I just wanna line things up with the symbols. So Rosh Hashanah, the proclamation of July 18th. Not, I'm not saying July 18, 2020. I'm just doing a sermon at Lambert Church, which of course is an important uh, location to be doing a presentation and presenting the chronology that will eventually give us July 18, 2020. This is Samuel Snow's letters, right? That, that I've been presenting in 2017. Yeah, which seems like a, a fairly substantial event. Yeah. So then we can, then I think we can just put um, October 13th, 2018 as the third angel arriving with that um, even though we call that midnight, uh, it's midnight on a different line. So we will see that, that we would actually put that with Shamgar. So we're gonna deal with Shamgar and that, that date has a different role in the line of Shamgar.
So I'm just getting this here. So here, October 13th, we can put that there. Does that seem, seem sensible now? And that's gonna to relate to our line above here, right? Because we're gonna say that the first angel arrives, that this is Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar, and it's going to deal with this formalization of the message. And so the fact that Ehud brings us to this October 13th, 2018 date would be how we did things with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, in, in zooming into their personal lines. Is that making sense? Now, Ehud is primarily- Yes, better. Yeah, okay. And Ehud is about the 2520, and but he's more than just about the 2520. It's the chronology that comes from the 2520 that leads us to these conclusions. Without the 2520, we don't have this second angel arriving, which is a message of chronology. But up until this point, we don't have any time setting, right? It's just an analysis of things in the past. But when we get to October 13th, 2018, we now have a proclamation of time. And that, of course, relates to our whole message, right? So when we look at this line, we're saying that this is bringing us from 9-11 to 2023, to our time. And, and when we zoom into Samson, Samson's going to give us a lot more information regarding this line because um, it's going to cover this whole period again. But it's, Samson is pointing to um, April 5th, 2030, right? So it's going to give us information that leads solidly to that date that we have from other means. Um, and obviously, Deborah and Barack are going to cover some of the same history that we just did. But now we're going to look at Shamgar. So now remember when I did Othniel, I never drew out such a um, well-defined line. Now, when I, this is the trumpet, then the event here is going to be um, so, so just dealing with to finish off this line. We have the call to the Ephraimites with this trumpet. But now we're going to have a, a symbol. Right, so the symbol is 10,000, which also is a symbol of March 27th, which is also a symbol of the Levites, right? So, I mean, the fact that it gives us March 27th, 2017 doesn't mean we're placing it there. But one of the things that we get about this October 13th date, uh, and we'll see this in the story of Shamgar, is that we get March 27th, 2019, because that's going to be the date that is between October 30, 13th, 2018. That is, if you go from noon, October 13th, 2018, to noon, September 7th, uh, 2019, uh, when Jeff wakes up, right? You're going to have March 27th, 2019, commencing at midnight. So that... March 27th date is related to October 13th in that way. Now that's a lot of information. I'm just gonna duplicate this slide here. So I'm gonna leave the rest of that above there. And now we're gonna modify this line to be Shamgar. So I didn't, 
I'm not erasing it or getting rid of this. So this all has to change. So when we look at Shamgar, so let's go there now. Okay. <clears throat> now Shamgar doesn't give us much to go on, but he, we have lots of symbols here in this verse. Okay, so what's the first symbol we have? His name means sword. And his dad's name, Anas, is, is answer. Right. So it's an answer by sword. So this is the word of God. So it's a response to something. And um, he's going to slew of the Philistines 600 men. So we, we want to look at that as a number, a period of time. But also six is an overplus because there's five fingers on it hand and uh, so this word um, means above five right is what it means we're going to translate it literally um, so this has to do with counting just the number itself now a hundred of course can be um, a simple number a hundred it can be part of a larger number it can also refer to a hundredth part. And then significantly, we have this ox goad. Now the ox, um, the, the idea is that it's used for plowing. Right, so we can think of the lines and the goad itself means to teach or instruct. So this, this brings us to, uh, so properly to go, that is by implication to teach. So we can see that the line upon line method is to teach. So it's going to be instructed through chronology that's line upon line. But how can we place Shamgar? on a line. We don't have lots of information. We don't have lots of details to try to take this and create. Um, so the name Shamgar means a sword. That's what it says in, um, if you can see this over here, I guess I can make this bigger. Does that help? It's brown, uh, brown something or other in Briggs. Brown driver right? Briggs. Brown driver Briggs. Okay. Yeah, that's that's considered the standard Hebrew dictionary or lexicon. Technically, this is their dictionary. The lexicon okay. goes into much more detail. So when you get a brown driver's Briggs and you look up a word it will show you the examples and all the verses. It'll give you the references to those verses and how a word is used. So the way that the Brown Driver's Briggs works is it's by comparing scripture to scripture with scripture that you get the definition of a word. Um, so, but this is just Brown Briggs dictionary, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't do as much as the lexicon. The lexicon's a little more difficult to read because um, it has all these abbreviations and you have to get used to them. Now we have 600 men. So 600 can refer to a period of time. Right, so it could refer to 600 days. Um,
So what would we do with that um, 600? We want to put it into time. Obviously, it's it's um, the year and how many months? So it's one point six four two years. So it's basically um, one year and. 235 days. How does that break down into months? Um, well, if you do them Month, on months, like weeks, calendar, days. Um, yeah, so 7.7 .7 months. And so you That's count. an interesting number. Yeah, 7.7118922470. That's using a, a month of 30.44 days, which is a Gregorian month. It's nearly eight biblical months. So it's can can we place this from a certain date? That's what I'm trying to say. Is there a certain date that we can start at? What was that one day? I don't see it anymore. I didn't clip that thing. We could just say it's, um, uh, you know, we could count it as the number of months just in prophetic months. So six, so it's going to be 20 months. So that might be one way of counting it. which would give you a bit different number. The only thing I can think of is just start taking dates and pushing them out, see what yeah. other dates we have. Mm -hmm. uh. What about some of the dates that we we were just going over. Yeah, well, that's what I'm trying here, but I'm trying to figure out. Um, I mean, we have the September 23rd, 2017 date.
that just 600 days brings us to. Uh, May 16th, 2019, which doesn't mean anything to me. So I don't, I don't have an answer to that right now. So I don't know. I don't have an answer to it. Um, where the 600 days would apply. Okay, so, so I don't know. I don't have an answer to that one yet. I'm sure we'll find something. And, and just, you know, Angela mentions that an ox, ox broadly speaking, symbolizes uh, Joseph. Um, can you explain how the, the ox symbolizes Joseph? Uh, I just, I, I was trying to think of what, what the emblems of each tribe were. And then when I looked it up, I said Ephraim. And then, and then I went to Deuteronomy 33, 17, and it's all the praises of, of Joseph. So right. I just thought. So, I was so Ephraim, that. Ephraim is Joseph, right? Yeah. To, That's our understanding. So the ox is Ephraim, right? And so Ephraim is Joseph. So so this is a call. Uh, so so we, we connect Ephraim here. So we're dealing with Shamgar. Right. So Shamgar is now going to be connected with this call to Ephraim. So if we're going to deal with this line here, um How would we how would we place this call to Ephraim? So now we're dealing with Shamgar. So all these dates are not the dates that we want, right? Um, I could just do it this way. It's probably easiest. Just put the question marks here so we don't have anything in particular in these lines. Now, now, Shamgar, of course, is particularly what message. And we also need to deal with the darkness here. Third angel's message. Okay. At so, least that's been the conclusion. We are using Athnal 1, Ehud 2, and Shamgar 3. Right, so it's, it's the third angel's message. Right, so that's what we have, the arrival of the third angel in the line above. And, okay. 
so there's there's something about this message of Shamgar that um, we have to address. Okay. We don't know particularly, we know that it has to do with the sword. Right. Has to do with plowing, has to do with the ox, has to do with... Um, now, the, the thing about Shamgar, we don't, we don't really know anything about him. Now, you know he's the son of Anna, an Israelite, right? I mean, that doesn't really tell us much. It has to do with an ans answer, but it doesn't really t give us his genealogy. Now, the interesting thing about um, Anath, now it does mean an answer, but it comes from the word ein, which is means an I, right? So, uh, so it's a primitive root properly to I or generally to heed, that is pay attention. By implication to respond, by extension to begin to speak, specifically to sing, shout, testify, announce. Give account, afflict by mistake, uh, cause to give, answer, bring low, cry here, Leonath, lift up, say times, scholar, give a shout, sing. So it's basically a proclamation of a message. And it's a message that is a call, we would say, to Ephraim. Now, we know that he's going to kill Philistines. So we've understood that this is not going to be dealing with the East, but with the West, right? Because Moab is an enemy from the East. The Philistines are an enemy from the West. And since um, Ehud made this call to Ephraim, um, you know, we don't have Shamgar uh, really dealt with any other place other than Judges uh, 5, 6, where it just refers to the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, which is in the days of Jael, where the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. So, um, so this is going to be dealing with the song of Deborah and Barak. So it's just going to refer us back to um, that history of Shamgar. Okay, um, so I don't understand your code. Angela, invitations to rest of the PTM around 12, 25, 21. Yeah. Present truth, yeah, present truth movement. Because I recall you saying, well, we should be studying together. And, and then you oh. set up 12, supposed to be 12, 25, 21, and then again, 12, 25, 22. And I presume it'll be ongoing. Yes. Yeah. Though we get a different message in 12, 25, 22. But, but yeah. So, so there's an invitation there. Though we're going to take Shamgar is going to be referring to something at the beginning of these lines. So we're not going to put him at the end. So, so we don't have a lot of information about Shamgar. We don't know. I'm just seeing if there's any. Doesn't look like any commentaries have anything to add.
We have judges five, six, or eight about them by the yeah. time. Yeah, so we did, but that doesn't give us any more information. Well, I'm also thinking of plowing. I mean, that's a that's extensive work, and that's going to hopefully bear a really great crop. So there's a lot of studying involved, a lot of seeking God for wisdom for knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is a studying that's going on. Um. So I mean, here with Shamgar. I mean, I have ideas of what this is referring to. So um, we don't have specific s symbols other than the idea of chronology. And so I'm saying that this is going to address these ideas of chronology, but it's going to come to a place where there is a third message arriving, which represents a closed door. And so... We don't have a lot of events in the story of Shamgar to line these up other than the symbols themselves. So we have really one event. What, what is, um, what is, it says the, the highways are unoccupied. That means people aren't traveling on the highways because it's too dangerous. What, they go on the byways. What, ain't that, ain't that little, no. Literally. Highways represent streets, don't they? Well, yeah, yeah. The highways represent streets. High, highways can also represent um, the, the traveling of a message, too. But the idea here is that things have to be done on byways. That is, um, things have to be done not through the regular channels because there's enemies. On, on the back roads. Yeah, that's the back roads. Okay. Because at that time, wasn't the King's Roads uh, very dangerous to be dry or going on, from what I remember reading? Yes. So that's the problem, is you can't go on the highways because it's just too dangerous. So you, you have to find another way to get around. So you take the back roads. That kind of so, sounds like the last uh, couple of years. Yeah, but but also <laughs> when, when we look at yeah, when we look at the message of chronology as it came into this movement. Um, so just from my 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 own position personally, I was not accepted into the movement, other than Jeff. Uh, none of the leaders had any interest in anything that I had to say. Right. So, so there just wasn't an interest in what I was doing. Jeff was interested in it. To me, yeah. to me, that is the most interesting concept of this whole little conversation. Is that everybody doesn't have the, the high opinion of you at that time. And even head to this time, mm -hmm. how it lasts. I mean, just it, it baffles me completely. But not really. Isaiah 53, they didn't accept Christ. They judged him by appearances. They judged him. He was distasteful to them. There, That's no right. No beauty that we fired him. So it, we have to focus on, on the message. And right? as I said to call last year, I think it was, I don't care who the message comes through, even if it's Balaam's ass. <laughs> I said that to Jeff one time when I first met him. Now I wasn't referring to Jeff. I just I don't like I'm I'm so dense. I don't understand a lot of it, but I know it's truth. Instinctively, I know it's truth. Intuitively, I know it's truth. And just because I don't understand it, and I might not like the mannerisms or the appearance or whatever of who's presenting, that doesn't negate the value of the message. Amen. Now, um, thanks. Um, so when it comes to this message, um, you know, of chronology, you know, I've tried to figure out what exactly it is. Now, I know I'm not a political person. I don't know how to schmooze. 
I don't know how to, um, I mean, I'm not saying I don't know how to, I know how to, if I wanted to, but I can't do it. That is, I can't play the game. No desire. Yeah. Well, I, I just can't do it. To me, it's like manipulation. Yeah, so same I mean, here. I could do it. I could, you know, you know, when I go to meetings, I could greet people and, and, and compliment them and do all the small talk. I mean, it'd be very, very painful, but, you know, I could do it. I understand, I understand how to manipulate people, how to ingratiate yourselves to people so that they will like you. Um, but I just can't do that. So, so I, I haven't played the political game um, to try to get, you know, my ideas accepted you know, to get me accepted as a person so people would listen to my ideas. One is I believe in the power of the ideas themselves, that it's God's truth and it has to be handled in a certain way. So if it is true, it will stand. And, and it has to be done in openness and sincerity, right? There can't be any pretensions. That's my understanding. Yeah. So, so in some ways I, I recognize the problem um, because I see how people who don't have truth can get a following, right? They know what to yeah. say, know what to do. And, and even Jeff, you know, it, it's, it's basically a miracle that he ended up with the ministry that he did based on how he approached things. He never did the big slick um, ministry, right? He never said that, the things that people want. That's true, right? That his style is semi-aggressive at times. Um, he's he does his personality is is not conducive to that environment. But <laughs> it was the truth that that. Uh, made me gravitate towards him it wasn't any of his yeah. personal mannerisms or or lack of them right so so i mean if it's true it will stand and god will have its time and and so that's what i believe about this message and especially relating to chronology you know i could have played the game but i didn't and and i didn't for a very good reason i don't think it's christian to do so you know, Tavo didn't like me. I could have made Tavo like me. I could, you know, if I wanted to, right? You know, I could have flattered him and, and done all the things that Parminder did. This is the guy that was living with you for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I didn't, right? So Tavo didn't like me, you know, and, and that's a large degree. Different people who didn't like me um, spread lots of rumors about me, right? So... I know that lots of people in the Canadian group are affected by the time they went down there to the camp meeting in 2019 and heard the stories about Heidi and myself and how we acted, all the events, uh, and why we ended up getting kicked out of the School of the Prophets. And that's affected how people think about me and Heidi. Right? That's I mean, we. So true. Yeah. So, so I know that, I mean, and I saw the way that they treated us once we got back from our, you know, once they got back from Arkansas after the camp meeting. So they treated us very coldly, just as people in Arkansas had treated us when we were there in 2018 and uh, 2019. So, so it was, um, you know, so to me, you know, I see how Satan works. I'm not going to play Satan's game. But we do know that this is truth. And, and I try as much as I can to represent Christ in how I deal with people. So am I always successful? No, I've flubbed up a few times. And, uh, you know, so, you know, so God's going to have to take care of this truth. I'm going to try as much as I can to represent it, but I can't. 
you know, I can't be responsible for it in the sense that it, it's God's truth and he must have a purpose and a plan and how things are going to occur. Isn't he the guy that has control of the wheels? Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. So learning to trust in God is a difficult thing for any one of us, right? To have faith that God is in control when everything around us seems to be falling apart. Um, that's the thing that I've had to learn, you know, through my whole. We're all learning. I'm learning it big time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm learning it, but boy, it's a painful process. Uh, I yeah. would say that that's a, a common thread that runs through all of us. Yep. Well, yeah, I definitely. Think so. Romans 14 10, it says, But well, why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty sobering. Yeah. And, and so, you know, we have to recognize that our work is not to judge and criticize our brethren and to find fault with them. And there's times that I do that. So, you know, I repent of that. And I think that's hindered the movement. So I can see faults in myself that are actual faults. Um, and then, you know, we need to, uh, the message that we're having on righteousness by faith from A.T. Jones is very powerful in that the focus is to be upon ourselves, our own relationship and walk with God by beholding the face of Christ, not by beholding the law. Because the law will show us that we're sinners, but it doesn't have power to change us. But Christ does. Amen. And then we have to move ahead in faith, trusting that God is leading and do the things that he puts before us each day. And um, so, you know, planning a camp meeting that's stepping out in faith, trusting that God is going to lead, but with no, no sense of wanting to control what's happening. Just allowing things that God unfolds things. Cause lots of times people try to, you know, lead instead of follow. And so we need to learn to follow God. And trust that he, he's the one that ultimately will be leading us. So when we deal with this message of Shamgar, I mean, it definitely relates to the message of chronology. But can we take Shamgar, do we have enough information to place this on a line where we have seven different waymarks? I mean, we don't have much. We have, I mean, if we're going to put in the symbols as they come, we would have a sword. We would have an answer. Right, that's Shamgar, the son of. So here, I'll just do this here. I'll just show you what I mean. So all we would have here is right, we stick have it down there. Let's look at it. A sword. We would have an answer. Right, and then um, the next thing would be. Um, well, I don't know if I would put six here. But I'm just going to put six, whatever that means, whatever it means, anything or not. Um, and then we have uh, an ox code. The ox code, right? And then 600. And then the only other thing that, that we get here is he also delivered Israel. Delivers so, Israel. Yeah. Um, now, this word deliver uh, means properly to be open, wide, or free. So it's kind of what we just talked about. So there we have, you know, if we could put those as seven way marks, could we mark them as, as events in our line? And that's what we're going to have to do tomorrow.
When did Jeff go to war? Um, what do you? What are you talking about? What, what was when your... did Jeff go to war? He, Jeff went to war at one time. We spoke with this a few days ago. Um, dealing with, uh, were you dealing with, with um, in the story of Ehud, dealing with um, Newport? Is that when he went to war? I can't remember. Uh, uh, yeah, me neither, and uh, I have to go back to the transcripts. However you, however you What's that? However we looked that, at that. Now, you know, maybe we have put six, or I'm going to do it this way, 600, just do it a different way, put ox here, goad. Oops. Okay, so that's so. So we have Shamgar, the son of Anath, with six hundred men. He slew with an ox goat. We could even put six hundred slew. You know, we could put different things in here, but these we take as symbols. So how, how this is going to, to deal with events, we'd have to address. And even, um, So even the word um, slew, which means to strike lightly or severely, literally or figuratively. So maybe I would even put here slew and then put 600 men. Maybe that. There, like that. So I don't know. I don't know which is the best way to do this. As you, as you stuck those things on the line, it yeah. is funny that that's all we really seen was those those seven. Um, yeah. And it's it, it fits into our template. Well, but yeah. Now we you just need to go over what all these things are. Well, if we if we find the events that match these symbols, um, you know, because a goad means to teach, right? Um, and the ox is to plow. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and to me, the whole symbol of this is about a message of instruction, right? And delivered means to be open or even we could say teachable, hmm. but no pretension. But it's to me, part of this is gonna be the key of applying this 600 men. Where do, where do we take this 20 months? Hmm. Um, right, so 
So it's something to contemplate. Good place to leave off contemplating this. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I wish I had... I like this rendition of it though. It makes better sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, isn't this, isn't this what he's doing with us? He's teaching us how to, how to do this stuff. I, I mean, that, that's, that's what I'm getting out of this. You know I mean? Um, are, are we teachable? <laughs> yeah. Um, we need to learn something about this and because, you know, we can sit there and we can read the words, but then when we start to applying the symbology to it, 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 it takes on a whole different life. It gives you much more, as we said before, detail. Yeah. Now, of course, in the line above, you know, we just say Shamgar has to do with October 22, 2014. Uh, this is a message that's the third angel arriving. It's a message related to chronology um, that separated out um, this, this other, the other ministries in 2014. And which makes sense. As the as it's being applied, yeah. Not not being fully familiar with that futures, I mean that past is is kind of hard for me. But I, I've been trying to jot down all the the dates you've been throwing out with the notations as to what they are. I mean, you know, I could almost set this down in chronological form, yeah. which is what you've been doing over these past few couple of years. And that's, yeah. what I've been, that's what I've been doing is pulling those th things that you've said that I, I had no clue about. Yeah, but we've been going timing. through history, right? So we've been going through the documents. We examined the foundation. We got an understanding of the history of this movement. But specifically- a pretty good now, understanding. Now. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't know how, without understanding our movement, I don't really know how we could, um, we can move on. So, um, we ran learned has that noted that this verse, Judges 331, is um, the 6,600th Bible verse. Is that what that is? I think that was a yes, right? And then the combined is the matria. Yeah, 6,600 and then 2916 for the combined. Yeah, now what would 2916 be? Uh, that relates to 1629. Oh, the one, yeah, the 1629 of Dilio. Okay. Okay. Well, that's all very helpful. So we'll, we'll address this all again tomorrow, uh, dealing with Shamgar. So let's uh, close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, um, thank you for this study. And we just ask, Lord, that you can continue to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, help us to understand these things. We pray for this movement. For each person who has been searching out truth, we ask, Lord, that um, you will enlighten their minds, that they can be strengthened and have faith to trust in you. We ask this for ourselves as well. Be with us throughout this day uh, with the study in the afternoon, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.